Many unicellular organisms can't move independently, for example yeast. Instead, they are transported by water, air or animals. Some unicellular organisms have adapted to have structures that allow movement. For example, some bacteria have a flagellum, or the amoeba move by extending their pseudopods. Movement is essential for many multicellular organisms. To find mates, shelter, water and food. Today we're going to look specifically at movement in humans and how the skeleton, joints and muscles are all involved in helping us move. Starting off with the skeleton, the human skeleton consists of 206 bones. Bones are living tissues and if you remember tissues are groups of similar cells working together to perform a particular function. Some of your bones contain bone marrow that produces your red and white blood cells. Calcium is an essential mineral to ensure your bones are strong and healthy. Some of the major bones in your body include your skull, your jaw, collarbone, ribs, your sternum, your vertebral column, your pelvis, your humerus, ulna, radius, femur, kneecap, fibula and tibia. Obviously they are not all of your bones because you have 206 in total but these are some of the major bones. The skeleton has four main functions. First of all, for support. If we didn't have a skeleton, we would just be a blob of cells and tissues and organs all over the floor. We need a skeleton to be able to support our upright posture. For protection, the skeleton protects our major organs. For example, the rib cage protects our lungs and our heart. For making blood cells, like we said previously, some bones have bone marrow which produce red and white blood cells. And finally, for movement. The point at which two bones meet is called a joint. There are three types of joints. First of all, the hinge joint, which allows movement backwards and forwards. For example, the elbow and the knee are both hinge joints. You have the ball and socket joint, which allows movement in all directions. For example, the shoulder or the hip. And finally, you get some fixed joints which allow no movement, for example the skull. Let's now look at the knee joint in a little bit more detail. We've got the muscle at the top here and you can see throughout you've got several bones. The muscles are connected to bone via a tendon. At the end of the bones, where the two bones meet, you have cartilage and the cartilage is a tissue that will prevent the bones rubbing together and prevent them wearing away. Connecting the bones together, you have ligaments, and finally, fluid. There would also be fluid filling the joint for lubrication. So to prevent any moving parts from rubbing together and causing friction, we have a fluid in the joint so that you can move smoothly. Let's now look at the muscular system and how that's involved in movement. The skeleton is covered by muscle. Muscle is a tissue made up of muscle cells. And if you remember, muscle cells have lots of mitochondria to release energy through respiration. Because for movement, we need a lot of energy. Some of the major groups of muscles include neck muscles, triceps around the back of the arm, biceps on the front of the arm, abdominal muscles, quadriceps at the front of your thigh, and calf muscles around the back of your lower leg. We'll look now at how muscles are involved in movement. So we're going to focus on the pair of muscles which are on the upper arm, which is your biceps at the front and your triceps at the back. The biceps and triceps muscles work together to allow movement. As one relaxes, the other contracts. And this is an example of an antagonistic pair of muscles. To bend the arm, the bicep contracts and the tricep 
relaxes. To straighten the arm, the biceps relaxes and the triceps contracts. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at GCSCRevisionMonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at sciencesurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.